I remember when I'd left editing The Express and, and meeting a, a friend, and I, I said to him, what are you doing? He said, I'm doing nothing. And I went through all these incredibly complicated reactions. First of all, I thought this was despicable. And then I thought, you worm. What on earth do you mean you're doing nothing? You used to be a comment editor of a national newspaper. And then a few days later, I realized I was unbelievably envious. And that I thought, this has to be a perfect state to be able to say, I'm doing nothing and be all right about it. Mm. Because it seemed like, like, an, like Antarctica to me or somewhere else. You know, we, we can't allow ourselves that calm, can we? No, but if that goes on too long, yeah, well, again, you yeah. Yeah, you know, the, you're not supposed to be in veg form. You're supposed to be just on that tightrope. Know when you have to go into 800 you know, miles a minute, but then also know I'm starting to burn. That was actually my dissertation about flow. You know, when you're in flow, you have to be in that mm -hmm. moment. But if you keep going, there's nobody going, hey, hey, hey. It's become an addiction now because it's a moment where you can't stop because now you're, chase, you're chasing the, uh, the meat like an animal. So how do you, you talk about you know, knowing where a, a gate should come down, knowing, being able to see what's coming, which is mindfulness, yes? For me, yes. For the next person, it's like yoga. I don't really need to kiss my ass from both directions, you know. No, okay. But, uh, you know, some people, yoga's fine, tai chi, pala you know, all of these are about sharpening your attention. You know, going, going inward and understanding, because actually mindfulness, Tai Chi, you know, the, uh, but mine is mindfulness, is actually a trick. You're tricking your brain, and this is where neuroscience is so interesting, because all this is not our imagination, we're not reading auras, you can see it under a M fMRI scanner. That um, w when that amygdala is on, which for most of us, it's on all the time, if you send your attention, it's a trick, but you have to do it a lot to get you into the habit because it took you 40 years to build this one up or whatever. Okay. So if you send your attention to any of your senses, you know, taste or sound or feeling, it could be the feel of your feet on the floor, any single thing where you send your mind there, you're not just doing it and then, you know, reading a book, the amygdala automatically goes down. And can you see that if you look at it on an MRI scan? Yeah, immediately this starts to come down the heartbeat goes down, the, um, the, 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 the hippocampus where, you know, a, a lot of long-term memory, mm -hmm. the, um, the cortisol leaves, so the memory gets sharper. And if you practice that, I mean, even if you did a week of it, already they can physiologically see that there is some change in the brain. So I thought, well, that's good enough for me. So rather than just physical exercise, which is amazing that in England, when I got here, people didn't even brush their teeth. When did you get here? 1971. Sorry, I thought yeah. you were going to say 1671. <laughs> well, then they didn't have teeth. Yeah, exactly. That was really smart. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> now everybody needs, you know, to go to the gym because okay. they're in but, a link come, set. Come back to. But, but I'm saying what the next thing wave is is and not playing Sudoku every day because there you just exercising, if you get in any kind of habit playing it over and over, that isn't really growing a lot of neurons. You know, you're just getting into another habit. We have this thing called neuroplasticity, which again, science are very au fait with, but mm -hmm. for some reason we're still reading the secret, um, which means that, I don't know if I'm going off. No, Am no, going go, on, go on. Gene-wise, I can't lengthen my legs. I'll never be in the Bolshoi. You know, I'll ne I can't change the color of my eyes. But because of, um, we don't know what culture we're going to be born in. The brain isn't even developed when you come out of your mom, okay? Because if it grew to the full mm -hmm. maturation, uh, you would kill her. Mm -hmm, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's 24 months, and mm -hmm. then your brain would be developed. So you, you can still emerge without her suing you. Um, <laughs> And then mommy grows the brain, or whoever the caregiver is. Okay, you don't know if you're going to come out in the Sahara or you're going to come out in New York City. So the brain starts to, it is uh, experience. It grows by what's around and what, um, and uh, pretty much what's around. So, you know, it's got the mother in front of him, you learn emotions. So throughout your life, experience is what grows the neurons. Right and learning things. It's what grows the neurons, and they say when they, ch when they look under the scanner, there's more gray matter, and this is even for people in their 80s, which means you're growing, it's, let's make a metaphor, it's more muscle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it means knowledge. 
the more connections there are, because you got a hundred billion, but they have connections. And when you learn something, there are these kind of branches that grow out of it. So the more tangled that is, the more flexible your brain is, the quicker your brain is, you know, the, you just access to a lot more information. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I could go to Oxford later in life, because I started, because really I flunked out of Busy Beaver Nursery School, oh. <laughs> which I swear to God is where I went. Um, but, uh, but then suddenly I started to, who knew I was going to read science? And I could actually, it's a forest of information. And you get slicker and slicker the more you practice.